morning, everybody. On this 20th anniversary of the Nurse Tax Symposium, we are going to look back, trace the history, review what is current, and look ahead into the newest innovations uh, that pertains to percutaneous coronary intervention. I have no disclosure. In 1844, a French physiologist, Claude Bernard, coined the term cardiac catheterization and uses the catheters to record intracardiac pressures. In 1929, the first documented human catheterization was performed by Werner Forsman in Germany. He was a young surgical resident who has a goal of trying to find means to inject um, medications for cardiac resuscitation. He did self-experimentation, um, anesthetizing his elbow and inserted a catheter and ran into the basement uh, x-ray and took a picture of his uh, right, uh, with a catheter in his right uh, atrium. Of course, he was fired immediately and scorned by the medical profession. And um, he, he uh, did more experimentation with dogs, but not until he ran out of uh, vein after 17 cut downs. He was, uh, he was disappointed of not being the rec having the recognition, but in 1956, Forsman and Cornard Richard shared the Nobel Prize for his uh, pioneering efforts. In 1958, the diagnostic coronary angiogram, the key to selective imaging of the heart, was discovered by Dr. Mason, Mason Sohn, who is a pediatric cardiologist in uh, Cleveland. While conducting the imaging procedure in which dye was inserted into the aortic valve, uh, the catheter had, had migrated to the right coronary artery, and before he could remove it, 30 cc of dye had gone in. He expected the heart to fibrillate, but it didn't, and he knew at that time that he developed a tool in order to define the coronary arteries. He perfected this revolutionary technique and uh, use it with special catheters. This breakthrough a technology for the first time make it possible for accurate diagnosis of coronary artery disease and set up the stage for future therapeutic intervention including bypass surgery and later on angioplasty. In 1964, the father of interventional radiology, Charles Dodder, a vascular radiologist, introduced transluminal angioplasty by working with Melvin Jadskin. He used multiple catheters of increasing diameter to open the blocked arteries and improve blood flow in patients with atherosclerosis plaque in their legs. The patient is an 82-year-old woman who had gangrene caused by left popliteal artery stenosis but who had refused amputation. As a palliative effort, daughter passed a guide wire through the stenosis, which was then dilated with a double rigid polyethylene catheters. The, the left is the before with stenosis, the middle is the post, and two years later, you could see the, the still patent uh, intervention site. This, this crude method, however, uh, was known as the daughter technique. Andreas Grinzig learned the daughter technique while he was in uh, Zurich from Sittler in 1969 and began conceiving adding a balloon to the catheters and it was known that uh, Grinzig catheters was made at night and on weekends in his kitchen until 1976 when Snyder and Cook companies from Minneapolis took over its production. The first coronary angioplasty in an awake human was performed by Andreas Grinzig in September 16, 1977 in Zurich. The patient was a 37-year-old insurance salesperson with an isolated proximal LED stenosis. Although uh, he was, uh, the patient had consented to angioplasty despite knowing that he will be the first patient to be treated. 
The right is the anterior oblique uh, picture of the LED, and 10 years later, exactly uh, September 16, 1987, you could see that the persistent patency of the dilated segment. In uh, 1980, he moved to Emory University in uh, Georgia and became the professor of medicine and radiology and director of interventional cardiology, well, where he helped popularize uh, angioplasty and did about 2,500 in the five years that he was there. Sadly, Grinzig and his wife died tragically on October 27, 1985, when the private plane he was piloting crashed in a rural Georgia and on their way back to Emory from their beach home. He was 46 years old at that time. 1985 was a year of loss in the history of interventional medicine. All these brilliant four uh, doctors, Charles' daughter, Mason Sons, Melvin Judskin, and Andres Andreas Grinzeg died. Nine months of each other. And it was, believe, or it was recorded that Sunday night was a plane crash from Grinzeg, and uh, the following Monday, October 28, uh, Richard Schatz, the coin co-inventor of Palma Shot was about to meet him that following day. The balloon era, or the PTCA era, is the, me the major mechanism of enlargement was to in that includes dissection and arterial intima and media and stretching of the vessel circumference, which leads to two, to two limitations, the acute vessel closure that happens within the first 24 hours after the procedure and has an occurrence rate of three to five percent. And it could either follow the dissection, acute thrombus formation, or both. Then you have wrist stenosis that occur of approximately within the six months after angioplasty and caused by smooth muscle proliferation and neointimal hyperplasia, which is defined as greater than 50% reduction in luminal diameter and has an incidence rate of about 25 to 50%. In 1986, coronary atherectomy devices was introduced to help in the uh, limitation brought about by uh, balloon angioplasty. In 1994, Palma Shot stent was approved by the FDA for use in the United States. The second development was the introduction of intercoronary stent. This was introduced in 1986, and the objective is stacking down dissection flaps and providing mechanical support. They also reduced elastic coil and remodeling related to restenosis. Thrombosis within the stent was an issue, causing MI and death, and this problem has now been overcome by the introduction of powerful antiplatelet drugs. Uh, including the, these devices are DCA and Angiojet. Angiojet is a very effective device for removing thrombus-laden uh, thrombus lesions, and at the tip of the catheter are three saline powerful jets that creates a negative pressure and suck out the thrombus. We see this a lot for those of us in the cat lab on patients that present with acute myocardial infarction. Then we have the rotablator, which is specific for calcified lesion, operates by the principle of deflated, uh, differential cutting, I'm sorry. Uh, the, it, they use, it, it uses a diamond tip burr that deflates elastic normal arterial wall and ablate the calcified inelastic uh, fibrous at atheroma, indicated again for calcified lesions uh, and, and some SVGs, CTOs, and interest, uh, in instant resinosis. Then you have the cutting balloon angioplasty, those longitudinal microtones are said to have uh, sharper than, uh, five times sharper than surgical blade. It produces better result with lower inflation pressure compared to plain old balloon angioplasty. In 2003, the first drug eluting stent, Cypher by Johnson & Johnson, was approved by the FDA and marking major advance in the battle of restenosis to single digits, followed by the following year by Boston Scientific, Texas drug eluting stent. The 
The development of drug eluting stent and its clinical application is a major milestone and is referred to as the third breakthrough in PCI following angioplasty and bare metal stent. To ensure a controlled delivery of therapeutic agents, serolimus and paclitaxel, the agent was blended with synthetic polymers or carrier claw coating the stent. The 2006 is characterized by stent frenzy and hype, followed by hysteria in 2006. Media coverage of the late DS thrombosis certainly led a great deal of concern among patients, physicians, and the whole medical community. Drug-eluting stents have been implicated in increased risk of stent thrombosis, as deadly as acute occlusion of the stented segment. The following year, the SCAR registry uh, uh, released a, a result that there is no overall increased deaths with DES out to four years. They say, what a difference a year make, right? The mechanism, sorry, the mechanism and timing of uh, DES thrombosis could be early, as a, uh, less than 30 days, late, could be one to 12 months, or very late, over than 12 months. Pre-coagulatory conditions and suboptimal implantation are the main factors in the development of stent thrombosis during the first 30 day of implantation. Delayed endothelial recovery and peristrent inflammatory response are the, stimuli, uh, are the stimuli for risk for very late stent thrombosis. Now, in 2008, we have the release of a second, a second generation DES endeavor in February 2008 and science V Everolimus by Abbott in, in 2008 as well. The difference between first and second generation uh, DES. Newer, gen newer generation DES demonstrated improved restenosis and stent thrombosis cons uh, in, in, by comparison, in part due to the reduction of the stent struts and thickness as well as polymer thickness. The first generation DES was not healing because of following reasons, hypersensitivity, malopposition, late stent thrombosis, and lately the new substrate, pathologic substrate was identified, which is the neoarthrosclerosis. It is increased with time and developed earlier and more frequent with DES than BMS and current rupture causing stent thrombosis and occlusion. Neo uh, Neoarthrosclerosis in a living patient has been investigated in our lab, acquired by image mod modalities including IVOS, NIRS, and OCT, and will be presented by our research scientist, Yulia G. <laughs> um, the uh, angioplastic continuous uh, evolution continues to improve in platform design and acute performance. In 1997, we aimed to get the artery open. In mid-80s, we, we want to keep the artery open. In 2003, we want to target restenosis. And future, we want to assert healing. We want to target healing by lowering the event rates, reduce the use of a prolonged uh, antiplatelet therapy, and reduce the risk of neoarthrosclerosis. Synergy stent is the first and only FDA-approved platinum chromium alloy that delivers abluminal everolimus from an ultra-thin biodegradable polymer, which results in reduction in polymer exposure to complete polymer absorption shortly after drug elution stents. Um, this is the comparative uh, struts and thickness of, of uh, the most recent stents. Uh, is 74 micron on the struts, and the polymer is uh, abluminal is four microns. I guess everyone in this room will agree that thinness is uh, is good, is better, but not too thin, right? Uh, comparative impact of uh, uh, strut thickness on the development of thrombogenicity. Uh, the, 
uh, Synergy has seven micron compared to the biometrics and BVS. And the, this demonstrates decreased acute thrombogenicity with respect to platelet aggregation and inflammatory cell addition while fostering enhanced endothelial recovery. The uh, stent report lowest uh, rates of uh, stent thrombosis in real world from the SCAR registry, uh, covering the period of 2007 to 2015 of over 83 patients, has a, a rate of uh, stent thrombosis is about 0.25% on the use of Synergy compared with uh, Promise Premier DES. Now we're not done yet, we're, we're done with the first, first revolution is uh, our first, uh, first revolution is the PTCA, then we, we, we had BMS, the second revolution, the DS, third revolution, but we're not, you know, the study done in, in 1988 by Patrick Seroy, serial study suggests that the vessels uh, stabilizes in three to four months, so the rationale of uh, wanting to, to have uh, BVS in the future is because the need for it is transient. The need for the stent is transient. We have a vision to improve long-term outcomes by leaving no scaffold behind and with the potential benefit of restoring the vessel to improve its uh, vas vascular function, eliminate sources of, vasal, of, of vessel irritation and inflammation, the, the, leaving the vessel free of uh, future treatment options, reduce prolonged use of uh, DAP, and improve, basically improve quality of life of patients. Uh, the Absorb is, uh, was approved uh, in Europe around 2011, and last summer, 2016, was uh, approved in the United States. They, uh, the phases of functionality, they, they like, the B, like the DES, the BVS provide radial support to prevent vessel recoil and elute anti-proliferative drug that will control neo hyperplasia and prevent restenosis. Uh, rest, they restore gradual loss of radial stent after six months, the return of pulsatility and vasomotion, and then reabsorption, gradual and complete scaffold reabsorption within three to four years, enabling re-indutilization and allowing the vessel to regain its vasoreactivity. This is a picture representative of human image in five years comparing uh, absorb with metallic science V. And this is the five-year events rate treat in patients treated with BV BVS in comparison with science. And uh, on the screen is a picture of the, with arrows where the stented segments where the device was implanted. The middle section is the OCT uh, re, uh, images and the IVUS on, on the bottom panel reflects that there is change in, in, in plaque deposition from 6.9 to 6.59 to right after the procedure to 6.98. However, in March of this year, March 19 to be exact, uh, the FDA issued a warning to healthcare provider of the increased rate of major adverse cardiac event observed in patients receiving the BVS compared to patients with approved metallic drug eluting stent science. And then they went on to discuss the recommendation which Dr. Sharma had already discussed, preparing the lesion, uh, sizing the vessel and post dilatation. As in summary, um, the uh, the treatment of obstructive CAD using minimally invasive angioplasty has evolved dramatically in 30 years. The enthusiasm of each advancement was met or fought with un un unforeseen complication. Now whether BVS will be incorporated fully into, into routine use depends upon safety, efficacy, and ultimately their place in therapy has to be determined. Now, I'm speaking all the time about complications. Uh, 
you may wonder and will say, look, he's talking about complication from the beginning to the end. Why is he doing dilatation? Well, fortunately, those complications are rather minor in percentage. Those are complications which occur sometimes, we are lucky, two, two patients out of hundred, sometimes we are not lucky, five patients out of hundred have to go to an emergency surgery. So we have to pre be prepared for that issue. Um, it is easy to be a hero and do a lot of dilatation, a lot of, of stenosis, but um, you also then have to be a hero to face a family in which you feel probably that the approach wasn't right and you should have waited a day instead of getting in and trying to elegantly everything in one session and then running in trouble, which could have been avoided. So uh, if you want to be a hero, you better be it also in the follow-up and also then you have to face the patient's family after you had a trouble. And that's the reason why I speak up about complication. It is not because it is such a major problem, but it, it is always my major concern in selecting patients or treating patients. Amazing what he said 30 years ago is still true now. Thank you very much. <laughs>